when I first saw the trailer for it and I saw the, the you know, face mask of Richard Pryor, I was like, what is, what? Welcome to the MCSFO podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Ray, and I have the writer and director of a great sci-fi film that was played in the Atlanta Sci-Fi Film Festival called Jesus Shows You the Way to the Highway. Welcome director and writer Miguel Janzo. Hello, Amanda. It's very nice to, to see you finally after so many years that we have been spoken. Yes, after so Speaking. many years, exactly. I think since, um, oh my gosh, 2015, yeah, I think it's been five yeah. years, that's crazy. Yeah. When <laughs> we were premiering Crumbs. Yes, in- yeah. exactly, when we were doing Crumbs, which is an awesome sci-fi film that pretty much blowing a lot of people away and you did it again. You did it again with Jesus shows you the way to the highway. So for those people um, who haven't seen it, why don't you go ahead and start and tell us a little bit about the film? Well, it's uh, as you, maybe you can read online or you, you can see the trailer. It's a very crazy film. Uh, <laughs> you have um, many elements which are subverted. We have, um, um, Batman, which is the president of Ethiopia, and he's Norse cocaine. Uh, he's kind of the bad version of Batman. And, but also we have really bad politicians like Stalin and like George Bush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but actually the story is very simple and it's very um, essential. It's basically a tragic comedy. Mm-hmm. It's a story about a um, CIA agent, which is Daniel Tadese, the main character also of my f- uh, previous film, Crumbs. Mm-hmm. He's, yep. he's an Ethiopian actor. So he's a CIA agent and he gets lost in the system and he tries to go back home, like in the Odyssey. No? And, and then he's, he suffers a lot in a lot of adventures. And, and uh, finally, well, the question is, is he able to come back home with, with his beloved wife or, or, or not? I, I must admit, when I first saw the trailer for it and I saw the, the you know, face mask of Richard Pryor, I was like, what is, what? What y'all doing with Richard Pryor? What you doing with my Pryor? Now, <laughs> I didn't get it at first. I was just like, because, you know, in the trailer, you can't really, you just all these clips and, and I just was like, I don't know what this is, but I trust Miguel. I trust your work, you know? And, and to me, when you see a director that, that you know of and you've known their work, and it's not like, you know, I've seen a lot of things by you, but I've seen enough where I'm like, okay, clearly this guy is on a different path or just he's in a different <laughs> space. And, and I mean that obviously in a good way that, uh, Things are very, very, you know, very, very smart and intellectual, but it's delivered in such an artistic way. You're not just throwing stuff in a pot and grind and and saying, here, eat. I I knew that about you. So I was like, okay, I trust that this makes sense and that there's there's definitely something going on here. I can't figure it out in the trailer, but it looks intriguing enough. And, And that's to me what a trailer should do. If you have no emotion at all when you watch a trailer and you don't really like care about it, then you didn't do a good job for the trailer, but if you're gonna shock people and be like, what is that? You're asking a question, that means you're intrigued. Yeah, actually, well, yeah, we have Royal Refor, Richard Pryor. Basically, we had to, to include big stars in the casting. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, since, we, since I write very surreal films, and nobody wants to finance them. Like, mm. see, let's let let's put like some stars there. And then, uh, some people believe that my films are very intellectual, and other people believe that they are very silly, mm. and, th- and very naive, and and silly and stupid. And I think both are right. That uh, they are, mm-hmm. the films we do are very silly, but mm-hmm. very intellectual. <laughs> You know, you're going to have a certain element to it that's for everybody. And I think that uh, at the end of the day, that's still a good job as a director to be able to give a little bit to different people. So I don't, you know, have an issue with that at all. I mean, you know, um, I would just feel, felt like, you know, would have been great to obviously have a lot of this conversation uh, right after the, 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 the screening. Yeah. 
Um, but what, you know, what it did was it did allow for a lot of people to kind of like marinate on it because, <laughs> you know, right after you may have a couple of words, but then when you think more about it, because, you know, like the drive home, people said, I was still thinking my images from this film and still putting it together, you know, even after leaving, you know, the theater to see it. So, you know, kudos to you for doing such a great job. But um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the comments that we did hear um, that I think I might have shared with you, but some of the guys had said. Uh, cool. So what did you think about the movie, that, the feature film? Wow, it was like watching 4D chess. It was, it was <laughs> levels of like introspection on everything that's current. It's a statement. It was. It kept you hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ooh, <laughs> how many that's, films do you see that have that comment? Yeah, that's probably because there are a lot of pieces like in a chessboard and a lot of elements. I always said, I, I'm repeating myself, but I always said with a, fr a, a friend of mine that I play with, I play the drum show, and we have a kind of a, a statement and we say, instead of less is more, we say more is more. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so there are a lot of kind of elements because the, the films that I do, I collect a lot of ideas during many years. Mm. I mean, the bone, the bone is very simple. It's this tragic comedy, the, the person that has to come back home and everything. Right. But then I, I kind of fill it with a lot of ideas, things that pop up in my So it, I think it looks like uh, that everything is so linked. Sometimes you can get lost. And I think since all the symbols are a little bit subverted, so nothing mm. is what it seems, mm -hmm. uh, it needs a little bit sometimes uh, mental effort. Like, but what, what, wait a second, like, but Batman is not Batman, but this guy is not this guy. So yeah, it, it looks like uh, yeah, a small figurines, mm -hmm. uh, big amount of a small figurines. And you try to have to, to understand the whole picture in one view, you know? Like, uh, it's very great. The four, 4D chess. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a very. I'm gonna write it down for my. For yes, the yes. <laughs> yes. They thought it was also very brave, um, and they actually loved the whole cult cinema and and, and it's the whole uh, subgenre, midnight screening, things like that. Um, did you think about that? Uh, I guess before, uh, probably maybe not before during you shooting it. You know, I would think maybe afterward. But you did. Did you think about your audience and? Uh, the challenges or maybe no, not many challenges you would have in, in finding that audience and making sure that, you know, because it is a very niche film, but niche films are, you know, diamonds in the rough a lot of times. They don't sometimes even get discovered until, you know, way after they've come out and now it's, you know, available online. So, you know, I just think that um, they always have a small following, but when it grows, it takes off and these people are dedicated, you know, fans of films like this. Actually, I thought it was going to be a little bit more commercial, or or I thought, <laughs> but <laughs> I that because for me the the story was quite simple in my imagination. Right? Mm. But that's maybe because I take so much time, or we take so much time to 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 make the film that in three years the story for me is totally logical and makes sense in my head because I have been going through it so many times that right. it appears like a cl crystal clear. Mm. And then when I show it to the people, they say, man, what a trip. What a I thought it was clear, right? And, and so, yeah, but at the same time, there is something that I realized with time, showing the film in midnight se sessions and everything, mm -hmm. that that is the question of, it's a little bit more a film to play with than to watch. Sometimes, and you know, like um, mm -hmm. sometimes people watch films and they go home and they got entertained. And sometimes we, we have to be, um, give, give something from our side to play. Like, I, I don't know, uh, well, when you go with a kid to a park mm -hmm. and the kid starts saying like, hey, let's play in this trunk. And this trunk is a ship, is a ship, uh, a ship and, and, and a boat. And and you say, come on, it's not a boat, right? It's a trunk. It's, it's right. a, you know, but, but yeah. then you have to make a little bit of effort to play with the kid. Yeah. You, you, you made that effort because you have to make like if and, mm -hmm. and, and, and use your imagination. So I think I realized with time 
that uh, since our films are very satirical and very subversive and certainly surreal, you need to put a little bit from yourself and you, do, you, you have to enter in the game. And, and some people enter and some people don't. And it's, mm -hmm. it's fine. It's like, man, this is, I, I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's a great analogy though. That's an awesome analogy and it totally makes sense. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, I can, I'd like, you know, I like to think that definitely the attendees, of course, that come to the Atlanta Sci-Fi Film Festival is very intellectual. We tend to uh, show a lot of films that are very thought provoking. Um, mm -hmm. And that's all for, for, you know, on purpose, obviously. We, we pick films that are very thought provoking because within science fiction, that is the place where you want to think, in my opinion. You want to have fun and there's nothing wrong with a great, great sci-fi ride, a great alien movie, things like that. But, you know, in addition to that, I personally think that, you know, when I started the festival, I wanted a little bit more films that were thought provoking um, uh, to encourage people to create more of those um, so that, studios can see that these are films that we want to watch as well you know the independence day of the you know men in black those are awesome fun rides so we want those too um but we also don't want where we get only that and because they will think that's all the only type of sci-fi people want to see is the blockbuster you know fun action ride and for a while that's all we've been getting Totally, but I think Hollywood is killing a little bit the uh, film because all these franchises, mm -hmm. for me, sometimes the formulas are so over and, and it's very difficult. I mean, I'm talking about mainstream uh, yes, of course. cinema because there are so many incredible things a little bit in the underground. It makes you think, reflect, uh, provoke. They are more inspiring. But when I watch, I mean... Well, from the big films, the only one I enjoy a little bit and got a little bit out of the track was Black Panther. But, mm -hmm. Black Panther, but, but even though, I mean, it's, the formulas are so that there is no space for anything, uh, 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 you know, new or, or something mm -hmm. surprising in the plot. Right. And yeah. but life is totally the opposite. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. life is uh, totally surprising. Uh, I live in Estonia right now, and mm -hmm. and who was going to tell me like ten years ago that I was going to live in Estonia, uh, or who? So we we cannot really predict, and so I like this kind of films, right? That were where yes, they are an unpredictable, like surprising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. wish uh, maybe going back to the all Hollywood, right? Because when I watch third encounters of the third kind mm -hmm. or all these films from the 70s even if they are big films they still have some magic some yes. uh, in the first spielberg things for instance they still some magic uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no there is there is and i i definitely have um a little bit more uh, optimistic view on you know what the studios will green light nowadays when it comes to science fiction just because we've had a couple of films and tv shows i think that tells the studios oh the audience really loves this kind of stuff i mean um shows like westworld and devs um i wouldn't have never thought i would have lost all kinds of money if someone bet me five years ago that not only they would you know, allow those shows to be made, but for them to sustain and have several seasons and people, you know, opposite of devs, because that was just planned to be one season, but I'm pretty sure if they did two seasons or as many seasons, people would still watch it. There's no way anybody would have convinced me that those shows would have been as successful as they are. Um, you know, given the fact that they just always thought, oh, people don't want to see anything that makes them think they want to see that. Um, so I think that it is changing and I think films like yours will get the green light once they get it, once the suits get it and they see the proof and see that people, um, there is an audience for this and there's not just a small little audience for this. This is actually a bigger audience than you thought. So hearing those comments from everyone really helped me as well because I'm like, okay, I think we would, you know, our audience is smart enough to, to get it, to understand it, you know, and, 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 and really would appreciate 
something like this. Um, the interest for science fiction, I think, is growing, right? Because the, the, the times are <laughs> really uh, fascinating for that. Yes. And sometimes not for a good reason, but uh, they are very, uh, there are, how can I say, unprecedented times, right? Like mm -hmm. where everything kind of can fall apart completely or there is sometimes sometimes a, a horizon of hope and uh, but very very strange times I found